It's recording. I think it's recording. Are you sure it's recording? I'm sure it's recording. It's it's recording. How 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 sure? It says recording. <laughs> I clicked the little message. It says we're recording. Is it? Uh, does it actually say recording though? Yeah, yeah. Little thing at the bottom. Pause. Stop recording. I'm gonna move the mouse as far away from that as I can fucking get and start drinking. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Budweiser, because after that mishap, I fucking need it. <laughs> I'm Brewdog. Cheers! Brewdog, drop me some free, drop me some free cans, man. <laughs> Cheers! Brewdog, I need some free. Cheers. Yeah, for anyone watching, we did a whole flipping 40 odd minute session, just for joining to say, oh, by the way, it didn't record. <laughs> Welcome back to our co-host uh, for his second week, Travelling Blade, Ben. Welcome right. back. For the fucking third time, actually, not the second yeah, time. No. Third time's a charm. We might win this time. Who knows? We're gonna be. We're gonna be. We were really negative on that first recording, so I'm, I'm kind of glad it's not out there. We're gonna try and be a bit more gonna, positive. I'm gonna be even more negative this time. <laughs> I wasn't negative enough. I gave us too much optimism. I only said two nil. It's gonna be a three nil loss this time. Oh, don't because I'm gonna just fucking. <laughs> I'm gonna giggle all the way from this fucking video now. Right, let's kick straight into it. Man City game. It, Useless. It was wank. It was just wank. I'm not pissed off. Like, I'm not pissed off with a scoreline. I'm pissed off with yeah. a performance. We we just didn't yeah, we didn't start, did we? We didn't get going. The scoreline, I think, it actually complimented us. I remember before the Liverpool game, a uh, few things. Well, I know after the Liverpool game. Uh, I said that that was the first time this season I've actually enjoyed watching United. You know, we lost 2-1. Uh, you know, it was a very strong Liverpool side. We, we we took the game to them. We gave them a good fight. We took the lead for the first time this season. And it was, a, you know, we lost. But it was a very spirited, gallant, battling performance. It was, you know, I actually enjoyed watching us that night. Man City, however, it was horrendous. I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. It was absolutely woeful. It really was quite a depressing affair. Like I said, um, um, I don't want to do that. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't angry. I was just disappointed. I wasn't disappointed. I was just depressed. Balls to disappointed. Yeah, so, I'm fully, I I'm fully understand what you're saying. Like to me, baffling substitutions. I, I don't see why he brought uh, McGoldrick on when we weren't playing a hold-up game. To me, it had to be Burt coming on from McBurney because we were crying out something to chase on to keeper when keeper had it and he were playing about. We, we were bypassing the strikers. We weren't, like Shearer said on Match of the Day, we weren't crossing. We weren't playing as normal game. It just didn't feel like us that we've become accustomed to. Maybe we've been spoiled on too much under recent times, but it, it just wasn't us. And that's what fucked me off most is the fact that it wasn't us. We, we didn't, we looked toothless. We looked like we didn't know what to do on the ball. Uh, I think Rambo had a good game. You mentioned in the take one before yeah, we lost I that. Yeah, that was... I suppose the only positive was the fact that um, it ended. You know, we said that, like I remember you you said earlier that like oh you know we could have lost four nil but if we'd have given a good performance I'd have been happy. Well, I think if it wasn't for Ramsdale, we we could have very easily lost four nil if not yeah. more. And yeah, you know, it, no one had a great well, no one had a great game. But Ramsdale, you know, I'll put you know I'll be positive. Ramsdale, I think had a good game. You know, he put some great saves. People trying to dumb it down, going oh it just hit him. Well, yeah, but some of the best saves in the world are just instinct reflex saves. Yeah. Even Manuel Neuer, David De Gea in his prime, Ike Casillas. They've all had shots, but it's just hit them. But it's been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Knowing so, where, I, getting I, in the right it, position, it, it knowing where to be. It, it just hit him. Yeah, that's his job, to be there. You know what I mean? I think so, too, many, too many people want it to be Dino that they'll just find excuses. I mean, they're expecting him to catch every shot with his knob, essentially, aren't they? <laughs> they, they, fucking, yeah, they expect too much of him. Uh, one thing we, we're we going to touch on is, uh, we mentioned about Brewster, uh, I know we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot, I know that on t we're going to keep referring to take one by the way, because because of the error in recording, but in take one and we mentioned- And if you haven't seen take one, you only have yourself to blame. I'm just going to- Not Johnny or Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it's all your fault, but as we mentioned, we're- we're not playing to Brewster's strengths. Uh, you mentioned yeah. that he'd probably do better 
for another club, essentially, would play to his strengths. And I know that Blades Analytics, a few other people have mentioned, we, we keep oofing it to McBurney, but he's not the type of player. He's good with his feet. He, he does seem to have decent feet on him. I know he's not going to dribble past 18 players, but he's got a nice touch with the ball. Apart from that one bad touch in the last game, but we'll not mention that. And we've we've refused to kind of adapt how we play to for McBurney, and he's not scored goals. If we do the same thing with, with Brewster, if, we, if we, we are stubborn, too stubborn for his own good and don't adapt our way of getting it to the strikers, are we not just pissing 20 odd million down the drain? Yeah, I mean, I know earlier on I said that I think we're not playing to Brewster's strengths. But when I like reflected upon it, I think, no, I was actually wrong. I think, I mean, we are playing to Brewster's strengths, but I think that if we played like Prime Chef United can, Prime Chef United did and Prime Chef United used to last season or for the majority of last season and the season before I think Brewster would be absolutely excellent in this team in the same way Moose was a striker where you know I reckon I reckon with Brewster from what the the little bits I've seen here and there good with his feet nimble quick agile good dribbler uh, decent bit of pace getting shots getting shots away from all places getting goals out of nowhere like I said a, 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 a similar to Moose and at the minute he's like he's like a luxury player and we just aren't playing well enough to afford that luxury I, I'm going to uh, now give my full in-depth full-on statistical tactical analysis of the Man City game it was fucking wank right before we move on who are your man at match for the City game and uh, the... Jesus Christ the ref because he ended it <laughs> uh, us for watching the fucking game next and what we're going to do now is uh, move on to Roy and get his thoughts on the game hello I look like shit because I've stayed up all night watching the American election which were a lot more interesting than United I thought on Saturday I thought we just never got going we, we never really put a foot in properly I, I can't fault the effort but there was just nothing there in an aggressive sense in terms of tackling or attacking Um just disappointed after Liverpool games. I thought we looked like we were showing some signs there. As, as much as I don't expect to beat City, I just didn't think that were a very Sheffield United performance. Um, I'm beginning to really, really dislike watching us at home as well because you see all the empty crap. That, that performance weren't great on Saturday, but you just know that if there were a crowd there, it's just you know you might we probably wouldn't have won or got a goal back or anything like that. But it's just more exciting. You've got more chance of. You, you feel like you're getting your frustrations out and, you know, they probably wouldn't have been fucking pissing about with it at the edge of the box like they were for the entire game, but on to Chelsea. Nice easy trip to Russia next to face Roman Abramovich as millionaires. Frank Lampard will have a well up for this game after a good start. Before we talk about the game, let's take a closer look at Chelsea. Jorginho, who rarely misses, doesn't miss here. Pulled the trigger, team over. Well away from the goalkeeper, perfect header from Zuma. Some scary stats in that with Chelsky next. I mean... A few things that we can take some premise from. They have had a bit of a, an okey start, really. They've drawn a few games uh, that you thought they'd have won. Yeah. Lost a few, but they, they do look dangerous. Uh, I'm going to bring some stats up now because uh, we don't we don't have enough of that. We just usually ramble on. So let's have some let's have some good old stats. Looking at key players. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna we're gonna have to change your name from traveling blade to negative blade. As a mystic blade. Pessimistic yeah, blade. Yeah. Sums it up. The moaner in the flat car. <laughs> right. That's it. Our key players. Uh, I'm going to pick two stats out. <laughs> because we, we don't have much it way successful stats. So these are the only ones that I could really pick that aren't too embarrassing. Uh, Sander Berger, our key player, I'd say. Uh, and Angola Kante, mm-hmm. their key player. <laughs> Well, let's start with the positive. Um, this season, Sanders had two shots on target. 
Conte's had none. Whereas Sanders made 228 uh, complete passes. Uh, Conte's made 441. Yeah, levels to this game. Fucking hell. Uh, it, it's... It's scary, isn't it, how good some of these players are. And I know Chris Wilder mentioned it as team talk. Expecting us to compete against some of these teams it is deluded. But even if we can't, even 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 if we can't compete, at least Burn up. at least have a go. Do something. Actually, have a look. Like Give it to Buddy Gordon. A morsel of like a brain cell in there, and that little bit of brain cell knows that to win a football game you have to score a goal if we just show any of that that Man City game where we did it didn't even look like we it looked like we didn't even know that we had to try and score you know it's like they came off and someone said oh you know you've got to score and they went what? who mentioned that? I didn't know you had to try and score I thought you'd try and keep them out it, but uh, you know like you know when you run about the Chelsea and Kante we we struggle we struggle to um Break, break Fulham down in that second forty-five minutes against them. So, what in the name of all that is holy we're meant to do against Engolo Kante? Like earlier on, we were having a good discussion about uh, who we start up front, strikers, who's going to be the best for this style of play. And I just thought, you know, I don't even know if we're going to get into their final third at points on Saturday. We'll do well to get it over the halfway line. You ready for a positive set of stats? This will, this will really, this will. We haven't blow. lost yet. <laughs> the game hasn't started yet. What else is there? Head to head, this is an all time. I've got the all time stats in front of me, but I'm not going to read them because they're they're not nice. We're going to go for the the Premier League head to head. Uh, out of eight meetings, we've won four of them, drawn one, and lost three. So we're ahead. We're winning. We're already winning. If we're already up, fucking write it off. Cancel it. We've won. Fuck it. We don't need we've to play. Won. We don't need to play the game. We've already fucking won. So, won. what what do you think of that? Is it going to be uh, four all by the fucking end of the weekend or what? We know what. I, it, it's too easy to be negative. But if I'm going to try and be optimistic, you know, I can just see. I don't think it'll be as bad as Man City. I don't think it'll be as good as Liverpool. If I'm I, don't, I, don't, be, I don't think syphilis if I'm will be, be as bad optimistic, as Man City. But it, it can't. It can't be. It can't. Well, there can't be less effort because there's. You can't go lower than less effort. There's no effort. You know what I mean? Apart, you know, there, there, there were Ramsdale that did did okay, but I just think with this game, I, I don't know where the sparks. I just don't know where it's going to come from. You know, we can, you can throw Norwood in. If he comes good in this game, then I'll be staggered. But he just he doesn't have to be as good as he was. He just has to be better. We don't have to be as good as we were right now. I mean, I, I wish we fucking would. But I'll, I'll, I'll allow you know allow us to not be that good straight away. Just better. Just actually trying. You know, we've got a it's a hard game. You know, I think I think realistically, even if, even if we'd played well. We wouldn't really be expecting a win here, would we? No, no. Even if we play well, you're going I, to I, going to Chelsea. You're not going. We're going to win this. You know, when yeah. we played for the season, I thought we're going to win this. I think even if we were playing well, you don't. We're not a club that can really expect to be. I'll, t- I'll take. Chelsea, I'll take a one nil loss now, just like we did against Man City. As long as we show some bollocks and actually, actually I, try I, something, cross the fucking ball for one. If we, if we, you know, if we have defend across. Go- yeah, I mean, right, we're going to move on to lineups because obviously we can't have Ampadu uh, in the team. So I've gone for the same lineup I wanted for the City game, which I near enough got. But this time, I want that same lineup to have a pop, actually have a go because I think it can be decent. I, I, I'm crying out for Burke and Brewster. That's what I'm crying out for because I think that, that could be a good combination. Yeah. I, obviously. As much as I don't want to see Ender as a, as a centre left, left, obviously, as much as I don't want to see Ender as a centre off, that's what we've got at the moment. And, and I want to see Lowe given a decent go. It's never easy, is it? Debut, get a concussion. Next game that you play, Man City, fucking hell, that's, might as well just have another yeah. concussion for all the fuck it, all the chances on the ball they got. But if, if we give that a go, obviously Ampadu can't play. My, my lineup's going to be on the screen now. 
as you can see, the only change I've made from what I wanted last week is it's going to be Norwood there. And Norwood's a funny one because he used to make his tick. He used to be... Ever since Project Restart, he's not looked the same player, and I think that's ended us a lot, really. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of players, if not the whole team, um, never quite the same since Restart. Um, even, you know, most, most if not all, players have ne- not been anywhere near as good. The only one that's got better is Sander Berger, but that's because he, you know, he struggled to hit the ground running straight away when he joined in January. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the bar was relatively low for him, but he has he is genuinely good now. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's we mentioned it last week about the old Mourinho duvet thing, and he's, you, he's trying to start plays, and it just sort of like, you're thinking, God, this is... It, it really feels like we're just trying to pull people out of anywhere, you know. It's, it doesn't. You're not. You're not starting. You, you know. You when you, when we're choosing place for this lineup, you're not picking him because going. Oh yeah, pick him because he's good. And the hard thing, the hard thing. There, yeah, there were hard decisions, but not for the right reasons. It weren't going. God, I want to play him, but I want to play him as well. Yeah. This was like, well, I want to play him because we ain't got anyone else in that position at the minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or thinking. Let, let's put Ben's team on screen now. Uh, you've obviously gone for Robinson in there with Stevens on the left. Um, yeah. Norwood in for Ampadu because he's missing. Uh, Osborne and Berger. And Burke and McGoldrick up front. T- to me, is it a bit harsh to take Brewster out of the team? I know you say we've not seen, really seen much from him, but uh, yeah, there's got to be some reasoning like- behind it. I don't think we're playing well enough to start Booster yet. You know, I think we need to, um, I don't know, say almost go back to basics. But I mentioned earlier, you know, like we mentioned, um, I don't think like, honestly, like on about players adapting to the team, t- the team struggling to adapt to players. And like I said, if we're playing our best football, which we, you know, we're miles away from, I think Booster would be an absolute gem for us. Uh, but we're miles away from that. And, you know, I don't think we're playing well enough to afford the luxury that is Rian Brewster. And I think McGoldrick, however, is much more bedded in and I think the team know what to do with him. Yeah. And I think hopefully we get the ball rolling, hopefully this weekend. I think once we get the ball rolling, hopefully at some point, start getting a few wins, start getting a few goals, Brewster will come into that side really, really well when we found our confidence. Um, I would definitely bring uh, Brewster on as a sub uh, against Chelsea. Starting him though, I was very tempted. Like I said, I, I think Brewster and Burke probably are, and if not, could be our best partnership. But the reason I went with McGall is because I just thought, I just think we need to. Like I said, there's a lot that you know. The vintage shift you know we mentioned about like Norwood has made a stick in the past, but also McGoldrick has been. You know, it used to be Mark Duffy, um, and if he didn't play, or if he didn't play well, the team wouldn't play well. And then it became McGoldrick, where, you know, yeah, we know how many sitters he missed, but as a number 10, that attack, you know, sort of that basically that centre attack in mid role, you know, he's, he's second to none, especially in our squad. And he was brilliant. And I just I just think that, especially with someone like Burke, who, you know, yeah, Bruce is not slow, but Burke's got lightning quick pace. And I don't think anyone, I've not seen uh, another Sheffield United player uh, put open, have a, have a, a cut open defence. Um, or even attempt to cut open the defence in some of the ways that Burke tried and actually succeeded against Liverpool. Well, to me, yeah, I agree. That's why I'd, that's why I'd want him up there with Brewster. If I'm if I'm honest with you, I th- I think that them two up top with him carving them open, causing the runs that could leave when they're following Burke around trying to grab onto him. That could leave pockets of space open for Brewster to get into, like accelerate into. You look at I the mean, running, you look at them running yeah. in against Villa that won as the penalty. If he can get into that kind of space and knock it through when they've got somebody like Brewster running on, that could be fucking lethal and that's what we're missing. Yeah, I, I think almost. Like, I sort of want to play all three. I'd almost like to see Burke and Brewster up top with McGoldrick sat behind them as a count. Because, like, the reason I'd... And I've, I've I like, stop... two midfielders behind him so you could have, like, Berger and Osborne or Berger and Norwood behind McGoldrick yeah. with those two. So yeah, so like switch the diamond to a much more positive, not the diamond, the three, midfield three. Yeah. Rather than having a CDM, swap that for a camp, try and make that more positive. Because the reason I, pretty much the only reason I dropped the Roosters is I thought, I want Burke for his pace and also his, how well he's on the ball and I've actually seen something from him this season. Yeah. Um, and fair, him and Brewster have had very similar, he's not, he's not had much more game time than Brewster, really, yeah. Burke. So 
And in that, he has shown a little bit more. Um, you know, does get on the ball more, challenge defences more. Um, and I just thought, right, I need someone up there. Rooster's going to be one of them that sort of needs it playing forward to him or through to him or through for him to run onto. Whereas I thought McGoldrick can be that anchor, like I said, that Mark Duffy role, yeah. where, you know, it provides, because the midfield's struggling as it is, but the midfield, if you can just bring another step to the, another a level between the midfield and the strike force, the midfield don't have to do as much to reach up there. So rather than having to take it all the way and then create a chance for the strikers, they can get so far of the way, knock it to McGoldrick, then move forward a bit more themselves because yeah. we're really struggling. I mean, it shouldn't be like that, but we're we're really struggling to try and carve out chances and you know get chances. Yeah, I, I agree that that triangle it, it could possibly work. My my only fear with it would be in the championship that would be fucking deadly. In the Premiership, I think that little pocket of space the CDM gives you to kind of sweep up. But saying that though, the, the CDM we like the the old in midfielder we've got isn't a dogged, defensive, tall, strong player that's going to chase down a tackle, is he? He's just more of a set-up player, isn't it? More than well, kind of... Like, that, that oldie midfielder position we've got, the players we're using it aren't oldie midfielders. They're, they're more like deep playmakers, aren't they? They're so not Mo Bethages, basically. No. Yeah, that, that's what we... I think that's what we miss, especially in this game against Chelsea. Yeah, just need... A player just like Mo Bethage would be brilliant. A nice, um, you know, ugly player, but also pretty decent on the ball as well. Mm. I think he'd be brilliant. I, it's a shame we haven't still got him. I think he was. Um, I think he'd be a. I like. A I, like I like Osborne. I really like him. So, to me, sometimes he's, he's a chihuahua with a pit bull's attitude. Whereas more Besic were just a fucking pit bull. And yeah. in, a, in a dog fight like we're in now, I'm going to stop with the dog references a minute. I swear to God, but. This game against Chelsea, more Bessic would be fucking brilliant. Aggression, slow the game down, a bit of strength with the aggression. And I, I just think that bit of grit is something we are missing midfield at the minute. Yeah, I mean, you know, Berger's, you know, he's, he's pretty, got his, his, you know, he's because he's got his uh, the bit of, nice bit of size to him. He is quite decent, he's okay at that role. And no, no, I don't know. I don't know because. I was saying to Kev, uh, Big Kev, the other day when we were playing, because not only do I wish Sand Sanders had one of our best players, one, I wish he'd put a bit more power into his passes. I think they're a bit flooded sometimes. But two, for like somebody who looks like he's about a seven foot four and could wrestle in WWE, he gets muscled about a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, I suppose so. I think, you know, I suppose he's still young. He's, he's, I think he's almost might be a bit too nice as well. Yeah. Too nice of a person. Um, Take him downtown on a Friday night in Sheffield. Get him in West Street Live. <laughs> He'll be fucking sticking his leg in then. <laughs> ben, always a pleasure to have you on. We look forward to having you on every week if we yes. can. Um, give me a, we've uh, successfully done take two. So it actually give, recorded this time? It's actually recorded this time. So give me a cheers. Cheers. Shout uh, out to Brewdog. Bro Send some free cans. I hope Brewdog bags at the fucking weekend. Uh, give us a score prediction before you go. I'm going to stick with what I said, um, but this will be a fighting loss. 2-0 uh, Chelsea. If the team that turns up against Liverpool turns up, 1-0, maybe even sneak a 1-0. If the same attitude turns up that we had against Man City, we're going to lose 3-0. We're going to move on to Roy now. He's going to give us the views from, as well as giving us his own views, and we're going to get some more fan previews. So on to the Chelsea game, I've got a few views they're, they're not really talking about the United match because they, they're in the Champions League this week so they're obviously they're concentrating on that first but there's a couple of views here and there's one here which said it'd be nice to beat them and convincingly after last season's performances against them I think while there's a really good manager they're a good side particularly when you consider the resources but we should be going uh, looking to get a convincing victory when they come here another one like another one person here says they were top off the table last season but now they've been sussed out in the relegation fodder and another one says this is a dire Sheffield team we're looking like they'll get relegated my initial reaction to all that is but obviously you can't really argue with it we've had a terrible start so it's good to know that that one that first uh, comment um, has a lot of respect for us and stuff and you know, I'm not, I'm not going to write the game off or anything like that. I'm really disappointed with that performance on Saturday, but who knows? I, I, I don't know. I just think that we, like, while they seem to have Lampard's number last year, 
and obviously we're going to have to be much better than we have been to get anything, but out of all those games coming up, the Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City, I did feel Chelsea were probably the one that we had the the better chance of maybe picking something up. Q a 4-0 defeat. Hiya, uh, big Kev, off, off my deathbed to talk to you. Uh, season so far has not done very much to cheer me up uh, in my current condition, but uh, I thought... I was quite excited after the Liverpool game. I thought we were turning the corner, but then last week I was a bit disappointed. Just, just seemed something missing. There were no, uh, I don't know if it were just final ball into the box. I don't know. So now we move on to Chelsea. Uh, if we expect no and we get no, we've not lost out, have we? So uh, I don't think we can expect out. It'd be nice if we could do what we did last year and take four points out of them this season, but I just can't see it happening at the minute. I'm confident though that after international break, we'll uh, start to turn corner a little bit. Uh, I think Brewster, I, I think Mike Verney gets a lot of stick, but he's just not getting ball in right places. Uh, Brewster and all, I mean, number of times they were in that box on Saturday and ball never came anywhere near them. But as I said, let's all pray that once we get over um, international break, um, things turn corner and we start to climb that league. All the best. Cheers. So after uh, a, a, not a bad 1-0 loss to Man City, but not the best performance, we move on to another top side in Chelsea. And they've just got a lot of pace going forward, haven't they? That, that's their key, Pulisic, Werner. Abraham if required, ZX got that bit of quality. So it's it's gonna be a really difficult game of course. Um it's just it's it's been a really, really tough start for us fixtures wise. And obviously you struggle to see where points are gonna come from when you're this many games in and you're only one point uh, up and that point coming against Fulham, but I think we've just gotta try and do what we did more against Liverpool and just try and take the game to them. Yeah, they're going to be dangerous on the counter attack, but uh, if we don't set the game to them, I don't think we're going to get anything. We got, we took the game. I know they're a bit of a different side, but took the game to them twice last season and took four points off them. So there's no reason we can't do it again. Be uh, be interested to see what lineup he goes with this week. Obviously, Ampadu won't be available. Could probably see Norwood come back in um, alongside Berger and uh, maybe Osborne again. He might even start Lundstrom, but. Fingers crossed we can get something from the game and uh, continue our good run against Chelsea. Go on, you blade. It's Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. Um, I joke with Johnny that I'm struggling to, to find ways to say, please put the ball in the back of the net, lads, but let's hope this is the uh, the game for that. I'm hoping that they're going to be playing Kepper in net as opposed to Mendy, because Mendy actually looks like he could be a... Uh, good acquisition for them um, so hopefully Kepa's in and he can uh, gift us some goals we should be alright hopefully we'll start um, Bernie and Brewster again just keep them two playing together uh, I think that'll come I really do um, Berger in midfield maybe even Lundstrom for a bit of uh, for a bit of energy I know not many people are like like hearing that I think some people want him gone but I think he can do a job for us, I really do. Uh, I see that Havertz has got coronavirus and having to self-isolate, so that's, that's positive for us, but it doesn't weaken him that much when they've got players like Ziek and, and, uh, and players like that. So, uh, fingers crossed, we can, we can get something out of it. Frank hasn't got a great record against Wilder. Um, it seems to only been the one win, and, um, but usually with fans in the stadium it, it, it makes all the difference like that Boxing Day game against Derby um, turned up the uh, turned up the atmosphere when when we when it got hostile so fingers crossed for a Blades win Hey guys another video for Johnny at Shore and View previewing Chelsea game it's going to be tough they don't concede many at the minute they're playing really good football the only advantage we've got is that Kai Havertz isn't playing and let's be honest he's only just turned up They've got Mason Mount, I don't really rate, but he's probably better than everything that we've got. Um, I'd like to see us play number 10, if I'm being honest. It's getting to a point now where the creativity is so bad. I mean, against against Man City, one of the worst games I think I've seen under Wilder, maybe. 
and not taking anything away from the level of competition that it is because let's not kid ourselves i mean three years ago yesterday we played burton so you got to look at it with positives but against that sort of side that were there to be got at let's let's be honest man city weren't playing great we didn't create anything and you can't even blame the strikers the midfield was disastrous the left hand side we're at jack o'connell and we're at fleck so poor but all been well we can find a little bit of a rhythm we can find a bit of momentum get a cheeky goal off someone's knob end or something take a one nil move on to the next game international break so we move on to chelsea another tough game it's one of the top teams in form uh, can't see his grey note to be honest with you. you know, it's a massive ask. See Norwood come back in. I think we need to keep hold of the ball a bit more and dictate play. Uh, when we've got hold of the ball, we were giving it away too cheap last week. I, I'm not one of these that were over critical of losing one 0 to Man City. We had three kids in here playing only the second game ever in Premiership and to expect us to beat Man City. Massive ask. We've got to get that left-hand side sorted. Uh, but it is tricky. O'Connell's such a massive miss. But we keep what we've got, you never know. Uh, I said at the start of the season I thought we'd be in bottom three uh, after after Chelsea game. That's obviously going to be the case now. But I do think we will come good. We will get it right. We've uh, got to start playing teams at bottom half of the table. It's been a very difficult start to the season, but we will come good. Every confidence. Hello, my prediction against Chelsea. Uh, our last win came in against Chelsea. Uh, Wilde's got a good record against Frank Lampard's Chelsea. Win and a draw last season. They spent money. They look, some matches they look awesome. Then some matches they look very poor. It depends what Chelsea turn up. I think we could get a result. We goddamn need one. And hopefully we'll get one. Team news. I'm thinking, well, Ampadu's going to be out. So hopefully Norwood's coming back in with Berg. Uh, I want to see McGoldrick up front. Uh, I, I don't think Bruce is up to scratch at the moment. He needs more fitness or, or something, just to be, be a bit more sharper. So I'll go for McGoldrick and Burke. Uh, your usual defence at the moment, uh, which is obviously Law in uh, Stevens, Egan, Basham, and Baldock. So yeah, hopefully we need a win. We need a really win to kick us on. Come on. Na, 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 na.